you never know. You never know who is gonna be in their inner circle or not with these books, because sometimes these characters surprise you. What I would like to know from you guys, I have two questions for you if you've read Throne of Glass before. First of all, what is your favorite book in the series? And who is your favorite character outside of Selena? No spoilers, please. I just want to recognize their name. I don't know if I've met them yet or when I'm reading the future books, I want the names to pop out that they were someone's favorite. Hello and welcome to my channel, Jack and the Book Stack. I am so happy to have you here. How are you doing? Did you wear your sunscreen today? Are you staying hydrated? It's very important, it's very hot this summer. In this reading vlog, as I'm sure you could tell by the title and the thumbnail, I'm going to be reading the Throne of Glass series. And it's taken me a long time to finally bite the bullet, dive into this series. And that's because I've had analysis paralysis. There's so many opinions on when you should read the prequel and it has paralyzed me. I haven't been able to start, but I have decided to start with the prequel. And if you feel otherwise, well, it's too late. By the time you're watching this, I've already read it. So that's what I'm doing. That's what I chose to do. Hopefully it's the right decision, but I'm committing. In this video, I'm gonna spend one week dedicated to the series. So hopefully you will see me read all of this book and then also start book one, the Throne of Glass book. Ideally, I will get through this one as well. And hey, I haven't started yet, so I don't even know what I'm gonna accomplish. So just stay tuned and find out. And also drop a like on this video while you're here because it really helps my channel grow and it means so much to me. I would also love to accomplish book two in the series this week, Crown of Midnight, but I don't own it yet. So if I go pick it up from a store, then I will be sure to take you guys along, but kind of depends if I'll even get to that point. But I think I will buy it because I want to give this series a shot at least until book three. This is the one that I always see everybody rave about. So I think I'm gonna read Throne of Glass up through this book and then decide if I wanna continue from there. So even if I'm not enjoying it, which I don't predict happening, but for some reason, if I'm not liking it, I'm going to at least read four books, the prequel and then books one through three before I pass judgment. So I doubt I'll get to this one in this video because that's like, this is one week. I can't read that many books. These are not short books and they're not available on audio for like three months. Dang, there is a wait list for these. Sarah J has some fans. <laughs> By the nature of a series, this will probably be kind of spoilery because it's gonna be kind of hard to talk about books two, three, four in the series without spoiling like book one. So, I mean, if that matters to you, then do not proceed, I guess. Consider this your warning. I don't know, but I'm gonna go ahead and jump in. Let's stop talking. Let's cut to the reading. question on my initial impressions, but are you supposed to hate Selena this much? She is just so incredibly full of herself and especially for 16 years old. Oh my god, I don't know if I can stand her. I 
I just finished the first story, The Assassin and the Pirate Lord, and although I got off to a really rough start with Selena's arrogance and stubbornness and just sense of knowing everything at 16 years old, um, I got through it and I'm happy to say that I really enjoyed it. I think once she started partnering with Sam and taking the moral high ground, I really liked her and then her arrogance was kind of fun as she was like fighting for good, I suppose. So I'm optimistic that going forward, I can get on board with Selena. So time to keep going with it. I'm almost 100 pages in and I'm really enjoying myself, but I'm finding it almost comical how often these characters sigh through their nose. It's been three, if not four or five examples of this. <laughs> Okay, so I just finished almost 44 minutes of flashcards. I did my Spanish phrases, which are the ones that I input into there. And then this is my pre-downloaded deck with the top 5,000 Spanish words. Focusing on those so I don't have to focus on learning things that I'll never use. And eventually I'll get to these French ones. I actually haven't used Anki too much for my French studies, but um, I need to. But that's enough of that for today. Even though I'm enjoying Selena a lot better now, I'm still enjoying seeing her getting knocked down a peg and this part where her swagger dies a little bit. <laughs>
I'm really liking this Philippa character who puts Miss Selena in her place. Yes, queen, you're my favorite. I am an absolute sucker for flirtation in books in the form of Here's some books I really enjoyed. I want you to read them so that I can discuss them with you. That's so important. It is day four and it's time to check in with my reading progress. So far I have finished the prequel, The Assassin's Blade, and I am about a quarter of the way into book one, Throne of Glass. This one surprised me a little bit because I was really expecting a fantasy book and there was no magic in it. Magic is banned, so there used to be magic. I imagine there will be again at some point, but for right now, this is a story about an assassin. The Assassin's Blade is really a collection of short stories, giving the background on our main character, Selena, who is a 16-year-old assassin. And I can really see what others are talking about when they say to read this prequel later in the book series, because you have an emotional connection to a lot of these characters already, and in this one, you're seeing how they are meeting Selena for the first time. So I'm imagining, I mean, I haven't gotten that far yet, but I can really, really see that. But in starting Throne of Glass, there's a lot of references to what happened in this book, like for example, in the desert and with the mute master. So, so far, I'm pretty happy with the reading order that I chose. Even though Selena got on my nerves a little bit with her arrogance, I really enjoyed her sense of morals and how she was always standing up for and fighting for the underdog. The Assassin and the Desert was my favorite section of this book where Selena is going to train with the Mute Master and everyone in his gang of assassins, I suppose. And we meet Ansel who is training in the Mute Master's camp, and I think she was my favorite side character. I really enjoyed how bubbly she was. She was really the sunshine to Selena's grumpiness. The plot twist in this story didn't necessarily shock me or catch me off guard, but it did take an interesting turn. Now for some of the things I don't care for as much at this point. While Selena might be a powerhouse of death and destruction in terms of being an assassin, she's not really intelligent, is she? I mean, she's not emotionally intelligent, she's not socially intelligent, and she is definitely not strategically intelligent. Then again, she is only 16, 17 years old at this point, so that kind of goes with the territory. She just doesn't have the experience yet. I'm really seeing Selena as a puppet at this point. There's been a lot of warning signs in her face and she realizes something's a little bit off, but she chooses to ignore it. Or there's certain patterns of behavior that she is just ignoring and let history repeat itself. Or there could be like in her face warnings. Someone is telling her that things aren't the way she thinks they are and she ignores all of it. it kind of makes me think of that quote, when someone shows you who they really are, believe them. Another example of this is in the last story when Selena and her partner Sam are talking about taking out these two other crime lord assassins and they're talking about how vicious they are and how they enjoy torturing and killing people and they're saying how they're different because they only go after people that deserve to be killed and they try to make it quick. And I'm sitting here thinking like, how do you know? How do you know those people deserve to be killed? Because you're just doing what you're ordered to do. I don't think you have that much research beforehand before you take the contract to take someone out. But even in the very first story where Selena is shocked that her master is interested in getting into the slave trade, and she didn't think that he had such low morals like that, like, he just showed you he's not the kind of person you thought he was. So why do you assume that every time he told you the person you were contracted to kill was someone that deserved to die? I don't know. She's just kind of really ignorant and not very intelligent yet. I imagine that it's built that way by design this early because I hear she has an amazing character arc. I expect to see some growth. I expect to see her change. I do enjoy some of her arrogance at times. So when she's like 
battling with a bad guy and she's arrogant because she's a badass killer. I enjoy that. It's just, there's kind of like a time and a place and you don't know everything. I wish she would acknowledge that a little bit and I wish she would be a little bit more strategic. At this point, she's just kind of wanting all the glory and attention of being the best assassin. And really, you're just a puppet taking orders. You're not that smart. You'll get there. I believe in you. I'm enjoying myself. I'm intrigued. I'm excited to see how far I can get in the next few days. So I'm gonna keep going. It is still day four. I am still 25% of the way into a throne of glass. My dog's ball is still stuck right there on the bed behind the pillows. And she is desperately trying to get me to play with her. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to read too much more today. Day four might be kind of a bust. I worked like 10 hours and then I had to work on my July ranking video, wrapping up all the books that I read in the month of July. And hey, she got it, <laughs> almost. <laughs> so I had to work on that video a bit, get it finished up so I can post it in two days. And um, now I'm just, I'm trying to study. I need to make studying a priority even above reading. And it's really, really hard. I'm trying to limit myself to only 10 books a month for that reason, because I need to focus on studying Spanish and French every day. So I did 30 minutes of flashcards. I need to work on my French now. Um, so I don't know if I'm gonna get around to Throne of Glass today, but it was still a highly productive day, so I can't be mad. These challenges to find the champion are a little bit basic, no? Seem a little bit easier than what I was expecting, but we're on our second one right now. I just started chapter 22. Mr. Knox is in trouble, and I think Selena is going to save him, which is cool, because I like Knox. I don't think I've heard that name before when I've heard this series talked about, so I don't know if he's gonna become a major character, if I'm gonna keep liking him. You never know, you never know who is going to be in our inner circle or not with these books because sometimes these characters surprise you. I am on page 157 and Selena is talking to Kale about her background and how she was trained but then surprisingly she was expected to pay back all the costs associated with her training, maintenance and upkeep and it was super expensive and so he said did you pay him back? And she said, yes, I paid him back, and he spent it all within three hours. So in this moment, I'm really happy that I chose to read in publication order because I know what she's talking about. Without that, that wouldn't have made any sense, really. So I'm, I'm happy about that. I'm also happy that I know more about her previous master. What's his name? Abelin? I don't know how to pronounce it. Aerobin. Aerobin. I'm happy I know more about Aerobin and I have that background from the Assassin's Blade. It's giving this a lot more context. She also mentioned Sam. So the prince was asking Selena about a previous lover and so Selena was reminiscing about Sam and I wouldn't understand all the pain and grief behind that moment when she was sitting at the piano with the prince if I hadn't read Assassin's Blade first. So again, right now, I'm happy I chose publication order. All I know is if a ghost visited me in the middle of the night, I would not be this snarky. I don't know, maybe Miss Selena should be a little bit nicer about the ghost warnings in the middle of the night? It is day six and I just finished Throne of Glass. 
In this one, Selena is 18 years old. She's been a slave in the salt mines for a year, and she's been there getting treated very poorly when the crown prince, Dorian, comes to pull her out. He offers her a deal. If she competes in a series of challenges to become the king's champion, if she works as the king's champion for four years, she can have her freedom. So with little alternative, Selena agrees to compete to be the champion. During this time, she lives in the castle under the close watch of the captain of the guards named Kale. As I mentioned in my reading reaction, the challenges or the trials were so dumb. They weren't imaginative or exciting or fun, and there were so many of them. It was a challenge like who could climb this tower the fastest and who was better at archery. They weren't imaginative or exciting. They were so stupid. I think even Sarah J Mass got bored with these trials because the writing referred to these trials and challenges like in hindsight. Like Selena would say, two more trials passed and I was feeling a little bit sore and I had a little bit of a bruise on my arm or like whatever it was. But like she was looking back on it. So the reader isn't even a part of most of the trials, which is fine because they were boring anyway. When it comes to the plot, I was a lot more interested in this mystery element. So about two days before each trial, one of the competitors would turn up violently killed. Their body shredded, torn up to pieces, and their organs are missing. So there's some monster on the loose, and that was really intriguing to me. I enjoyed that aspect because, of course, Selena's trying to figure out what's going on. And because the murders are so brutal, that introduced an element of fantasy to it because it's obviously a monster of some sort that's killing these guys. There was another little touch of magic in the form of the paranormal because the ghost of the Queen Elena from like a thousand years ago appeared to Selena, not very imaginative with these names, huh? To warn her and help her through these trials. So that was another kind of a cool aspect, but I would say even these small elements of fantasy that we got in this book only hit in the last 20%. So this is truly more of like an assassin story and talking about, you know, her transition to the castle, her looking for ways to escape, then her competing in these trials. There wasn't too much fantasy until the end. Even though for an assassin, Selena sure does sleep a lot and sleep really deeply where she doesn't notice when people are creeping into her room. So I don't know how good of an assassin she is if she just sleeps through that. But since the magic did pop in at the end, I think we are setting the stage for the rest of the series so I can see how this ultimately becomes a fantasy series. In the end, there was a really cool display of girl power. I really enjoyed that aspect. It had me cheering along as I was reading, and I'm really excited with the friendships that have formed. But someone needs to comment down below right now if Fleetfoot makes it throughout the whole series, because if Fleetfoot dies, I need to know right now. So that is my second book completed for this reading vlog. Time to pick up Crown of Midnight. I just picked this up from my local bookstore and I'm going to see how much I can get through this book. It's over 400 pages. I have like two more nights that I can dedicate to this. So let's see how much I get done. I feel like it's Sarah J Mass's formula to have extremely attractive main characters. So here Archer is described as being the most beautiful man that Selena has ever seen. So you can kind of guess that this Archer guy is going to be a main character going forward because that's always the superficial description of these guys. 
Okay, so hear me out. I know we don't like this Caltane girl because she tried to poison Selena, but Selena just saw a weird creature in the library. She was warned through a message of the ghost of Elena that there's evil coming in the castle. And now Caltane just said that something's coming and she's going to greet it. You would think that Selena should listen to this and not just blow her off as being completely mad and useless. Maybe she should take this as a clue? It is the afternoon on day seven of this week-long reading vlog, and I think I'm gonna close out the vlog here because I think I'm probably done reading for the week or at least any substantial amount. I logged off of work, I read for a little bit, but honestly, I need to start thinking about making dinner soon, and then I need to start packing for a trip that I'm taking tomorrow, so I don't know if I'm gonna be able to hang out with Selena that much more today. Speaking of Selena, I got through about 20% of Crown of Midnight, and I'm enjoying it so far. There's a little bit more magic in this one as we pick up the plot two months from when Selena was appointed the king's champion, and her kindness still prevails. I really like that. She's always fighting for the underdog, right, which I said before, so that is kind of continuing here. I am not enjoying the continuation of this love triangle that we have between Dorian, Kale, and Selena. All the angst and longing and competition and jealousy is just not something that I ever enjoy in books. And you know what, I think I've read too many dark romances because I'm like, why can't the three of you just date and be a thruple? I think that would be kind of hot. Can I, can we do that? Kale is still dealing with the guilt and emotional impacts of his first kill, which happened at the end of book one. And that's really interesting to me because he's the captain of the guards. So I find it really shocking that this was the first time he's ever killed anyone. How do they train these people? Like, has he ever been in battle? Has he ever really done anything? Like that kind of shocks me. Selena is keeping a lot of secrets, which I understand. I understand she wants to leave her options open. I understand she wants to protect her friends. I understand that she doesn't want to put too much trust in them when the cost could be her freedom or her life. So I get that. I get why she's doing it. And actually, I gotta give her credit. It's kind of smart to keep some of these secrets. But on the other hand, it is very, very frustrating to read about. I don't like secrets in books. It gives me so much anxiety. So I'm interested to see how some of this turns out. At times, I just want her to be super honest with Dorian and Kale and like, I want to see the three of them like come together and charge justice. But of course, you know, that's not going to be the way this goes down, at least yet. I was really hoping to get through three books in the series in this week-long reading vlog, but unfortunately I only got through two and one-fifth, so I'm a little bit disappointed, but it's also hard when I have so many other things going on, so many other priorities like working, like not ignoring my boyfriend or my dogs, and also studying languages, which I am happy that that remained a priority. I have studied languages every day in the past seven days. So although I missed the mark for a number of books read, I am very pleased with the progress. I'm excited to keep reading and see how the Throne of Glass series turns out. There's a lot of books, right? There's a lot of plot twists that are gonna happen, I'm sure. There's a lot of characters. What I would like to know from you guys, I have two questions for you if you've read Throne of Glass before. First of all, what is your favorite book in the series and who is your favorite character outside of Selena? So who's your favorite supporting character, I suppose? No spoilers, no spoilers please. I just want to recognize their name. I don't know if I've met them yet or when I'm reading the future books, I want the names to pop out that they were someone's favorite. So comment one or both of those answers below. I'm excited to hear from you. Thank you so much for hanging out with me in this reading vlog. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next video.